Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sanket Pisat and this is just a short video on how to choose a pelvic trainer when you want to purchase one. So I'm sure all of you will agree that a lot of us who wish to move on from basic diagnostic laparoscopy to operative laparoscopy have to have laparoscopic suturing as one of the essential skills and for that uh, it is almost essential that one owns a pelvic trainer. With the multitude of brands available in the market, I keep getting a lot of requests from students to explain exactly which pelvic trainer to buy. Now it's not so much the brand of the pelvic trainer as the make and the design of the pelvic trainer which is important when you make the correct choice. Uh, for those of you who have not yet joined, I'd like you to invite you to visit our website www endogynetraining.com where we discuss pertinent questions of daily life problems in gynae endoscopy. So do join the group by clicking on the link available in the website and you can also take part in the frequent discussions that happen. Moving on, so this is the kind of pelvic trainer that I have installed in my clinic where we usually train our fellows and there are a few things to be understood while uh, purchasing the pelvic trainer. So for me, I am primarily an ipsilateral surgeon. So I am interested in looking at the ports which are on one side of the body. That means this port and this port. If you are primarily a contralateral surgeon, then you would not be using this port. Uh, you would be using this port and this port. So first of all, you have to decide what kind of a surgeon are you. Uh, mostly the, the, the concepts that I'm going to be explaining are going to be for ipsilateral and you can uh, extrapolate them to contralateral as well. Okay. So these are mostly for ipsilateral surgery. So I'd like to have both of my hands on the same side of the patient's midline and uh, this port I'm obviously going to use for assisting only. So what all do I look for when I'm looking at a pelvic trainer? So first of all, the pelvic trainer, in my opinion, cannot be a fl completely flat structure. So any device that is completely flat like this, like a box, is not a very good idea because we require as to simulate the normal patient's body as much as possible. And it is only in the dome shaped pelvic trainer that you can have these two main working ports which are going to be the working ports for ipsilateral surgery at different levels compared to each other. So this port is obviously going to be higher than this port and therefore in order to simulate this personally I would not like to have something that is rectangular but my preference will be to buy something that is dome shaped. So that's the first thing. Now coming to the second point uh, if you see some pelvic trainers and I'll show you some photographs as we go ahead in this video, you will see that the ports are placed next to each other. What do I mean by that? You can see in this pelvic trainer, this port is placed over here and this port is placed over here. So this is exactly how I'm going to place the ports in the patient's body as well. So assuming that this is the patient who is lying down and the legs are on this side and the head end is on this side. This is going to be my first port which I place and then the second port which I am going to place so I will just draw the first port and the second port that I place is going to be about 10 centimeters cranial to the first port but it is not going to be here. Yeah, The first port is going to be 10 centimeters cranial and about 3 centimeters medial to the primary port. Therefore, when these two ports instruments go inside you can see that they will converge at a particular point and i will be able to operate on a given area instead of that one finds that some in some of the pelvic trainers the ports are placed like this they are exactly in the same line as each other and i think this makes it very difficult to do suturing so in trying to simulate the natural body environment as much as possible i would prefer that these two ports the second port over here is slightly cranial and medial to the first port and not in the same line as the first port itself so that is the second point uh, the third point is that this has to be made of an opaque substance so many times when we go to workshops where students come for training we find that this is uh, made out of a transparent substance which I'm going to show you later on and this kind of tempts you to look inside with the naked eye not giving you enough practice to look on the TV screen. Fourthly, I think the 
television screen must be located at an angle which is slightly below the the surgeon's head so this is quite low but you could have the screen maybe at this level as well but definitely not a screen which is very high because that would make surgery very difficult so let's see some of these things in the next slide i think yeah so here we are yeah so if you look at this slide now you will see that uh, what i have done is the um, the person is standing on this side she is using these two ports as the primary ports and the hands are converging here and she is able to operate in the center the tv or the monitor is kept at a distance lower to her eyes so she is going to be looking like this towards the monitor and the eyes level is not kept over here because this is extremely uh, unavoidable lastly one more thing that i'd like to mention is often when i see it, students practicing and particularly when they are practicing contralateral so you see that one port has gone in from here and one port has gone in from here you find that the student is actually standing exactly in the midline like this and practicing the surgery now this kind of situation is impossible in real life because in real life you find that the patient's head is going to be over here so you can imagine that the patient's head is over here the legs are going to be like this and it is impossible that you will actually get to stand at this position and do any surgery so when you practice this part of the pelvic trainer has to be left blank meaning that you cannot stand anywhere on this line this is where the patient's head is going to be and therefore if you stand here and practice it will seem extremely easy to do the suturing but you have to leave this margin apart and stand on this side so that your hands will simulate the actual thing that you are going to do in the patient so just to uh, recap what i told you one stand on one side i'm sorry about that so let's say stand on one side yeah that's the first one uh second one is it has to be dome shaped third one it has to be opaque and fourth thing if you are doing ipsilateral then the port placement has to be at different levels so again like i said it has to be this and this it cannot be this and this if this kind of port placement is there this will be wrong and you will not be able to simulate what you do in real surgery at least as far as ipsilateral suturing is concerned so let's see some of the other pelvic trainers that are available so this for example if you look at it you will see that this is in the same line and for me this is very difficult unless of course you are doing contralateral then you will be using this and this and then that is fine so there's no problem then the next one is this one and you can see that this also has the same problem this has the ports in the same line and for contralateral for ipsilateral this is going to be difficult of course this has the added advantage of having a telescope inside but then comes the disadvantage that you need a camera and you need a, a screen and all that is the the requirement of having a surgical camera is taken away in the models which i previously showed you because they already have a camera and light inbuilt within the system so you can just have a stand alone system placed anywhere in your clinic or your home and you can practice with a regular household tv television screen as well then moving on to the next one so this is another type of endo trainer which is available again like i said uh, my issue with this one is that the ports are in the same line which i do not like and for these two port placements it is fine as long as you are not standing over here and operating because this will not be possible in real surgery you have to make a conscious attempt to stand over here and leave this part of the pelvic trainer vacant to practice so otherwise in this situation this kind is also very good as it attaches to the laptop and you can practice uh then we move on to the next type of one that i all these images i found on the internet this is also a very novel idea with a screen but again this uh, standing like this and holding on to the on the two sides and practicing in my opinion may make it a little bit too easy for the surgeon so uh, this hand placement provided you are standing on one side and try to kind of simulate again this this the problem with this is this is a box type of arrangement and therefore these two ports are going to be in the same level when actually you find that even when you are doing contralateral one port goes in like this one port goes in like this 
and therefore the person who is operating has to always bend his other hand over the patient's midline in order to operate so kind of try to simulate that particular environment when you are doing using the pelvic trainer as well and i think this is the last model that i found on the internet it's excellent to practice but then again when you have a transparent box then you are at least i would be kind of tempted to always keep on looking inside so i think that's it for this uh, do when you buy a pelvic trainer do take care to buy something that you are comfortable with and if you ask me for a recommendation so i am not recommending any specific company but i think this would be the kind of pelvic trainer to buy and i've already told you the three or four points that i would look for while buying a pelvic trainer at least and i think in the indian market these are available for very reasonable prices and bundled with some instruments that you can use for practice as well so happy learning and please do practice well on the pelvic trainer in my opinion at least uh, as my teacher used to tell me that at least 2 to 3 hours on every week maybe 2 hours on every sunday for 3 to 4 months is the minimum that is required in order to do well and perform good laparoscopic suture uh, thank you everyone if you like the video please click on the link to subscribe to our channel and to keep receiving more updates and for those of you who have not joined i again invite you to visit endogynetraining.com and to join our discussion group thank you so much for your patience and for listening